So I'm excited about the next customer now. Weaveworks, they're going to talk about uh, GitOps and observability of your Kubernetes clusters. So DevOps and GitOps. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about GitOps. All right. Are we ready? We're ready. Yeah. Let's do it. Hello, live audience. Howdy, Twitch. Um, my name is Craig Wright. I'm from Weaveworks, and I'm here to talk to you today about our product, uh, Weave Cloud. Um, Weave Cloud is a management and operations platform that enables Git-based continuous deployment combined with observability for Kubernetes. Um, today, I'm going to show you uh, Weave Cloud integrated with Amazon Web Services, um, Elastic Container Service for Kubernetes. Uh, first, let me set the scene to show you how you can use Weave Cloud to understand and look after your apps. Uh, for the past year, we've been working with a luxury lifestyle brand uh, with multiple properties across Europe and North America. As a member, you can interact with their brand wherever you are in the world. That requires customers to have access to a sophisticated set of always-on applications. The lifestyle brand has exclusive events and sells a variety of luxury items. Um, for the purposes of this demo, they've discovered that selling socks, um, specifically these socks, uh, are the key luxury item uh, for their members. And just for your reference, um, what we're looking at here is a demo, a microservices demo application we've created. It's open source. Um, we call it the Sock Shop. And uh, you're going to see this running on EKS in a second. So uh, our customer site needs to be available and performant at all times. That means that the IT team needs access to real-time metrics to monitor the site. They also need those metrics to troubleshoot and to solve problems. The business goals are availability and high performance, which is why they're using Kubernetes. And AWS's EKS is perfect for this. Obviously, I've changed the nature of the merchandise they're selling, uh, but this is the exact problem that this e-commerce site was having. Lack of observability um, for monitoring and lack of information meant they struggled to do root cause analysis. In a distributed system like EKS, uh, it's important to have observability of your workloads, especially as your containers are living and dying, starting and stopping, sometimes within minutes. Uh, we need to be able to see the whole system end to end. And when we're troubleshooting, that same observability can be used to get to the root cause quickly. Uh, that's why monitoring with Weave Cloud's Prometheus as a service is so important. Today, I'm going to show you three things. Using Weave Cloud to manage Git-based Git deployments into the cluster, giving you reversibility and a complete log of everything that's happened to that cluster. Um, two, I'm going to show you observability in EKS. So using the power of Prometheus metrics in Weave Cloud to uh, understand your workloads um, running on Kubernetes. We'll show you automated dashboards that make it simple to monitor and alert. And three, correlation across AWS services. So to understand the health of workloads, we need to correlate metrics across their external dependencies. I'll show you services within the Kubernetes cluster, uh, but I'll also show you how they relate to RDS and ELB. That gives us the complete picture of this running application. OK, so without further ado, let's jump into this. What we're looking at here is the um, cluster dashboard. But I'm going to hop over to our Explore tab. And what this is is essentially a map of your running application in Kubernetes. What you're looking at is each of those purple nodes is a, a Kubernetes deployment object. And these are actually the services that make up the sock shop. So there's like a front end service, an order service, catalog service, et cetera. Um, the lines are, represent the network connections, so how these services are interrelating. And let's go ahead and zoom in on the catalog service. And so what you can see here is that the front end, um, the catalog service has an inbound uh, network connection from the front end. Kind of makes sense. Um, and kind of cool, you can see that the catalog is using RDS, specifically a MySQL RDS database, as its backend. So you can actually see, visualize the external dependency here in this little chart. Um, on the right is a card. This card is a, uh, has a bunch of information about this deployment, um, including things like its network connections, um, what pods it's running, and what containers are running in those pods. Um, I'm going to dive right into um, a specific container. So this is a container, a, a card for a container that's running um, in this pod. And uh, from this card, we get a bunch of container-specific info. But we can also do things like uh, attach a live log listener, so we can have a real-time log from that container. Um, and I can also attach a live uh, terminal, so we can do some quick debugging from, uh, directly from this interface. 
Okay. So this is what it, uh, so this is what it looks like running in our cluster, but how did it get there in the first place? So let's talk about deployment. Um, there's a lot of information on this page, so I'm just going to walk through what an actual deployment looks like while it's happening, and I'll sort of explain uh, what's going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and deploy the front-end service. Um, the front-end service is a service that aggregates information from all the other um, services and creates HTML and CSS for the user to use. Um, so it's actually generating you know, this thing. Um, so let's go ahead and do an, uh, we'll release the latest version. So I'm going to click Release. So what we're seeing here is a release plan. So what that means is um, our, our agent that's running on your cluster can see your image registry, and it can see a Git configuration repository that has the uh, uh, deployment manifest for everything that's running in this cluster. So what it's going to do when I do a deployment is it's actually going to update the uh, tag in this deployment manifest in Git from the old tag to the new tag. So I'm going to go ahead and start that. So first, it pushes that, um, that commit to Git. And then once our synchronizer agent sees that Git has changed, it makes the cluster, um, it aligns the state of the cluster to the state of Git. So the reason this is powerful is that all of your changes are now monitored in Git, or they're, they're in your source control. Um, and you don't actually need to use our interface to do this. Um, you can actually do all of these operations through pull request. So that actually becomes a very powerful uh, deployment methodology. Uh, the other nice thing about running our agent is that it sees everything that happens to your cluster. So you get a, you get a history of every single change, which in the last couple of days has been a lot of deploys of front end. Um, <laughs> so this looks a little monotonous. But um, you can use this for doing root cause analysis and also for um, exporting for auditing purposes for like SOCs or SOC2 compliance. OK, now that a container is deployed, we need to know how it's running. So let's hop over to our monitor uh, system, and let's talk about our Prometheus as a service. So very similar um, to the previous things I explained, we run an agent in your cluster that collects all of your Prometheus metrics from your Prometheus metrics endpoints, ships them up to our multi-tenanted um, software as a service Prometheus, um, data warehouses those, and then makes those metrics available for 13 months for um, our, both our pre-configured dashboards and also dashboards that you create yourself. Um, I'm not going to be demoing the create your own dashboard functionality today, but I just want to let you guys know that that does exist. So this page is showing us an overview of the entire cluster. Um, and this screen, what we're looking at is these metrics segmented by namespace. Um, namespaces are a way of segmenting uh, how your applications run on a Kubernetes cluster. So for example, all of our sock shop agents run in sock shop, and you can see the sock shop namespace more or less takes up most of the CPU time here. Um, we also let you dive into a specific namespace on the cluster. So this flame chart is actually showing you a list of all of the services that make up sock shop and how they're running. And front end, I think, is taking the bulk because it's getting blasted by a, a load tester. Um, on this screen, we give you CPU usage, memory usage, uh, network usage, disk usage, et cetera. OK, so that's a broad picture. Now let's dive into a specific workload. Um, I just deployed front end, so let's take a look at front end. So this is a um, pre-configured dashboard just for the front end, or front end service application. Um, this is the roll-up sort of dashboard page. The nice thing about this page is it shows you the recent series of events that happened to this uh, deployment. So you know, I just deployed, so you can see three minutes ago uh, that happened in the log. We give you a very similar set of charts to the cluster view, but broken out for the specific um, service. So one kind of cool thing here, you can see I've been doing a few um, releases on the front end. So you can kind of see how the, um, the one line breaks and the new pod starts up. And this is now the chart for the new pod. And I just did a deploy, so there's the new pod coming back to life. Same kind of stats, CPU message, uh, sorry, CPU memory, network, disk. And one cool thing, if you're familiar at all with Prometheus, um, you might know that it's a little bit hard to manage all your metrics and know which metrics apply to which services. So we give you a tab that shows you which metrics apply to which service. It makes it easier to go do your own custom dashboards later. OK, let's tie this back to your external dependencies. So we have a new integration with Amazon CloudWatch where we're essentially doing the same thing. We're converting your CloudWatch metrics into Prometheus metrics and then exporting those into our um, service and making those available for dashboards. Um, this is a pre-configured dashboard. 
uh, that shows you, you know, what's happening with your RDS um, instance. <coughs> and so, for example, if my catalog service was running fine but had no connection to the database, I could pop in here and just see what was going on. We also have integration with ELB, which has been, yes, um, which doesn't have a ton of traffic to it. So it, you know, the stats look a little wonky, but suffice to say, it exists. And if I was blasting that with a load tester, um, we'd have some cool things to look at there. But I'm not. <laughs> OK. So that was a lightning quick tour of Weave Cloud. Um, Fundamentally, the customer I described is using Weave Cloud to increase availability and performance of their e-commerce sites. There were three elements I demoed that contribute to this. The first is using a Git-based release to deploy containers into the cluster. As each deployment is recorded in Git, we get reversibility and a complete log of changes to that cluster. Two, um, metrics to increase the observability of our Kubernetes app. Our Prometheus as a service is very powerful and very simple to use. Um, as you play around with configuring Prometheus, you'll see how that can be a challenge. And three, um, correlation across AWS services. So by correlating performance across all dependencies, we have a complete view of the application. That makes monitoring for health and troubleshooting issues simple. If you'd like to know more, our website is weave.works. Um, if you sign up for our free trial, you can get it set up with EKS in a few very simple clicks. Um, my email is craig at weave.works. Please hit me up with questions or if you just want more information. Um, and I have a ton more that I could share with you, so please come find me later and I'd be happy to share it with you. And that is it, so thank you very much.